This is the River Don. The River Don sources at Glen Avon at the Grampian and flows down Cop Bridge eastward, ending at the Bridge of Don going into the North Sea. River Don is the sixth largest river in Scotland. The River Don could be up to 15 feet deep and 30 metres wide. It's famous for its salmon and wild brown trout. The Don passes through Alfred, Kemeny, Inverurie, Kintore and Dyke. Its main tributary is River Uri that joins at Inverurie. The current bridge was built in 1924 to replace an earlier bridge completed in 1791. There is a steel box containing a record of the old and new bridges. It's written in indelible ink and fixed to a plaque. This is our local dog walker Elaine. She has kindly agreed to ask us some questions. What do you use the river for most? I use it for walking my dogs. Um, they love it down here and so do I. It's a lovely walk. What other users of the river do you, are you aware of or know about? I've seen a lot of people fishing, especially upstream. I've seen canoeists using the river. I've seen uh, people swimming. Uh, their families have picnics down there in the summertime and children paddling in the river. And in the summertime there is an annual raft race which takes part um, and it finishes down here, so it's really exciting. Hello, we are Catlin's News. The River Don is a diverse river, a habitat of many different species. Some species are easier to find than others. The most obvious thing to see are ducks, swans and black-headed gulls, as well as these animals. There are other animals which are harder to find and much rarer. Things like otters, water voles and Atlantic salmon. Under the water there are millions and millions of invertebrates which provide food for the other animals. These are some of our non-native invasive species in our local river. This is how they affect it. First up is Himalayan balsam. Like other balsam flowers, the Himalayan balsam produces best seed. The Himalayan balsam can produce 800 seeds from a single plant. Seeds are spread by the plant exploding, traveling up to five meters away. Seeds can end up in the river and get carried away by the flow, establishing downstream. Whenever you see one Himalayan balsam, you always see thousands. A single Himalayan balsam can spread its seeds up to seven metres, which causes more to grow on the riverbanks. Also, they grow oily spring and don't let any other native plants grow. In the winter, they all die and their roots are not strong enough to hold the soil and all the islands and riverbanks collapse to the water, leaving the trees to hold them together. Without any plants holding the riverbank together, it's just bare earth. And then when we get a flood, that water comes over the riverbank and then flushes away all that earth and then erodes the riverbank and causes damage to the dawn. And then that silt and all that gets washed into the river as well. And that causes problems for our little fish and for our invertebrates that live in the river as well. In 2016, water levels at the River Don reached the highest in 45 years during heavy rain. As a result of properties were evacuated, train services were affected, roads were closed, and also schools were shut. Invasive plants like Himalayan balsam aren't very good because of the impacts they have on native plants, uh, particularly. They also have impacts on our native uh, invertebrates as well. So, like our little bees, our insects, and all that that are pollinating our native plants because Himalayan balsam is so tasty to bees and things like that, they go straight to it and avoid our native plants. So often our native plants don't get pollinated often enough and therefore their numbers reduce as well. So they're not good in multiple ways, unfortunately. The easiest way to control the flower is just by simply pulling it out in the early month before the plant flowers. Next up is American Mink. As their name suggests, they're not from here. 
they're initially from America, but they were brought over here for the fur trade. So when they were brought over here to, to be farmed for fur, many of them escaped and established in the wild. And then many of them are released afterwards when the fur farms closed down. So these populations shouldn't be here and they cause a lot of damage to our native yeah. animals that we have in the river. Although cute and pretty, these American minks are non-native to our native species and some of the native species are the salmon and water balls. Once upon a time in the beautiful town of Inverary, there was a river called River Dom. In River Dom, there was a family of water balls that loved each other very much. Next door was the Anata family. Every day, the otter family would go next door and eat the water voles because that's the food that they needed to survive. The otters lived a very happy life eating water voles. But one day, some mink arrived and you might think, what's wrong with some mink? Well, that's what I'm just about to tell you. Once the mink arrived, they also needed food to survive. So they went out searching for food and found an enormous family of water voles. The mink were very hungry, so they ate the whole water vole family. Later that day, the otter family came back so they could eat their dinner, only to find out that the water voles were all gone. The end. What can be done to control these non-native invasive species? Well, let's have a look. <laughs> What we could get the public to do is volunteer with us. It would be great if we had members of the public come and volunteer with our work, be it the mink monitoring uh, and, and monitoring a mink craft and helping to monitor and track those mink that we have in the in the Don catchment or any other catchment for that. And then also helping with the, the invasive plant control. So maybe coming out and helping pull balsam and a very simple task that anyone can do and we can do that in big work parties and groups and, and get lots done nice and quickly. Or they can maybe help with some of the, the more um, uh, advanced invasive control as well, where we're using chemicals to control the invasive plants like giant hogweed and American skunk cabbage and that as well. And what we can do is we can get people trained that so that they're skilled to be able to help us as well with that. If they're not interested in volunteering, even just reporting that sightings as well. So if you'd seen a mink cross the road uh, in Inverurie or something like that down by um, the the damp at Inverurie, you saw one cross in the Uri there, you would, you can give us a phone or, or send us an email and let us know you've seen it there and then we can make sure we can go out and, and try and catch it. Or if you've seen an invasive plant at the roadside or somewhere along the riverbank, you could report that into us and any member of the public could do that as well and that would help us understand more about the invasive plants and animals we have in the catchment to make sure we can tackle them and get on top of them so they're not damaging our, our precious river.